Welcome back, Ashy Knuckle family, fam, friends, whatever you want to call it. Today, we're talking about the great news that happened yesterday. But for me, it was Tuesday. I'm here with my co-hosts, B. Woods and Marky G. I'm Mosey P. We're here to talk about Francis's uh, major signing to the PFL and the Dana White backhand I don't know what you want to call it. Him deciding to just poop on the whole parade with the fight announcement of the BMF pay-per-view. If that's what you want to call it. I'm not sure what you guys want to call it. <laughs> the, the BMF interruption. BMF, the BMF spoiler. Uh, B, it's just business. Can't, yo, so first of all, Huge deal for Francis. I um obviously happy for the homie. He uh, stuck to his guns and got rewarded for it. And definitely gonna bring a lot more eyes. Definitely these two uh, to the PFL. So it's a big signing for the PFL. Huge. I read somewhere. It was I think it was on Twitter. Like reading um, some comments uh, that that Francis posted, he posted um, a, a bit of a like not really a, a detailed contract breakdown, but he said that one of the clauses um, in his um, new deal is that he's going to offer his opponents a minimum of two million per fight. Jesus, yeah, that's fucking big. That's huge, especially considering like last UFC. She would the, the uh, disclosed salaries. And Jarzinho Rosenstrike uh, got the laziest double leg takedown I've ever seen in my life. He got, <laughs> he basically like lassoed his knees and took him down. The um, Almeida, the new heavyweight prospect. Yeah. Uh, he took, uh, El, he took um, Jar, uh, Jarzinho down, uh, you know, made quick work, of, quick, quick work on the ground and got the tap. They only got paid one hundred and thirty thousand. What? And Jarzinho's a name. He's yeah. a ranked fighter. Ranked fighter. So what? So to get so if, if Francis is saying he's offering his opponents a minimum of two million, do you think that's gonna sway some people from the UFC Maybe. to like come over? I think you will see a lot mm. of these vets. Uh, I won't even say vets, but guys that are like their contract is done. And it's going to push or force the UFC's hand. Like, look, if I could get over the PFL and possibly work my way up to Francis and get paid a minimum of $2 million, what are you doing? I mean, maybe. Because, I mean, in the long run, you, you also got to look at the fact that Francis' deal is only two or three fights. So he's going to only have two or three fights in the next couple of years. And a cup, or he's also going to be boxing before that. So maybe you might persuade one or two if they guarantee to fight with Francis. But I, I don't think that's going to have like a huge wave of people going to PFL just hoping to fight Francis. PFL has some pretty big names backing them financially. So I'm, I'm just thinking about what this means for the future. If he's doing that now and he gets even those three fights, two million a pop, like what's the future hold for that? Can they do that again? Can they make another big signing and you know start talking about fighter salaries looking more on par with other major league sports where it's like uh standardized, so to speak, like where they you know you play this position, you get X amount of dollars, and if you're at the top of this position, you're getting X amount of dollars. Where, like, because uh, UFC, like, even though at the top, at the very top, when you're talking about Conor McGregor or you're talking about John Jones, Adesanya, like, really huge superstars in UFC, they get paid really well. They're making pretty much a crop money. 
but mm-hmm. rest of the fighters um in the mid the middle tier and like the lower end of the top they're not making anywhere near that they're some of them, they're getting paid well some of them like <clears throat> i think i saw gilbert's last fight i think he did uh well over 500k you know when i saw the, i saw the break I'm, I'm i'm not sure maybe a little fuzzy on those numbers but he did well it was it was fine they're like he made um pretty good payday for a guy who's not fighting for a title um, but unless you hold the belt and you, or you're a big, um, popular star in the sport, numbers just don't get into the M's. And Francis offering two mil base for an opponent is pretty huge, considering like, you know, not m- most of the guys in the in even in the biggest game in town, which is the UFC, they're not making that. I mean, two M's. On the stars, I guarantee you they get that more often than you think, because most of them get the the pay per view points and they get the other deals and the the bonuses too. Like Daniel Cormier, always his breakdown always said that he got seven hundred fifty thousand for a fight, but he has been on record saying he got five mil, six mil for a couple of those fights because of pay per view points. So the the breakdowns that they get publicly aren't the full fighter pay for oh, everyone. Absolutely. The lower end, I, I guarantee you that's probably all they're making. But the higher end, like your stars, are making more. The way I look at this deal, since we want to compare it to other sports or whatever, I think the Francis deal is going to end up being the Cleveland Browns deal with Deshaun Watson. It's going to be that outlier that the rest of the companies are just going to be like, all right, you're you're dumb call. But I also don't think... Other than the fact that he got that supposed thirty million dollar signing bonus, and his opponents are going to be making two mil, the boxing clause on it, he's only getting like a year to do his boxing before he's an exclusive MMA deal with PFL, and he became the ambassador of Africa for PFL, which they were like, "Hey, we'll create a division for you because that doesn't exist right now." I saw Kamaro doing something too um, with an all Afri- African card. I saw some stuff on mm-hmm. Instagram with that. <clears throat> so there might be a little bit of a, mar- a little bit of a market there, and um, I know that there's a, there's a good bit of fighters coming out of that area. So it, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting to see what that looks like with PFL Africa. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I think in the next, we won't see the real like falloutness if the deal goes sour. Or the rise of PFL, if this thing goes well, for another two or three years at least. Like I think it'll take some time before we see any real change. I think this might be a step in the direction of maybe a shakeup of the guard. Because mm-hmm. the UFC seems to be going more the route of the WWF route, WWE route. They, they care more about storylines. They care more about review sales than they care about getting the pure champion like the best possible guy fighting the best possible guy for the top spot in the sport you see that with Kobe Covington coming off of two title losses and time off um, to fight for the title against Leon Edwards who's the current uh, 170 pound champion over guys who have been active and winning so who knows what that means? PFL structure, they still do that that Grand Prix style, right? Where they do like the tournament? So, yeah. That's one of the other reasons why he's not starting until next year. But he also said he's not starting until mid next year. So we won't really see the results of him and Jake Paul being in PFL until like 2025. Okay, yeah. I don't think, I think. Um, we're gonna. I mean, I'm interested to see how it goes because, like, when you have, when back when it was Pride and UFC going at the same time, we had we always had these potentials for for like the crossover super fights. We had guys like Vanderlei Silva, like doing crazy work over in Pride, and we had Chuck Liddell in the UFC dominating. Then we had Fedor and um, in Pride, like you know. Fedor dominating the heavyweight division in Pride, and then we had 
um, Randy Couture dominating the heavyweight landscape in UFC. And there was always this talk of like, what if we can get this cross motion mm-hmm. super fight for champion versus champion, Pride versus UFC champion, get a Fedor versus um, Randy Couture matchup. It never happened. And eventually UFC bought what was essentially what WME, what was it called? Um, Pride, Pride's label when they got they bought the rights to pride's fighters i forgot what it was and, but zufa had bought them all out right yeah. they, end up, they end up like absorbing pride and then making um and getting a lot of their fighters over and we got some good matchups out of that we got some yep. fun champions we got rampage we got uh, when i say we Lindo, i mean Lindo, i mean Lindo. when i say we i mean the um western world mainstream because ufc dominates the western world mainstream when it comes to mixed martial arts yeah they don't one championship don't mma at all they, they everybody you talk to that don't know nothing is like that ufc shit mm-hmm. you're doing ufc on them exactly yeah and they call every mixed martial artist a ufc fighter even if they're not affiliated with the promotion so that's the that just goes to show you the popularity of the ufc in the west uh, mm-hmm. um we got anderson silva from that deal um Rampage, Endo, Shogun, uh, Shogun. Vanderlei. Yeah, ton- mm-hmm. Got tons of uh, Overeem. Nogueras, Crow mm-hmm. Cop. Tons of great talent. And those guys were world, all world champion level. Like Anderson Silva dominated the middleweight division for years. Um, you know, Leo, Leo Machida was what? A uh, light heavyweight champion for, for a good spit, for a good stretch. You know, um, and always fun fights with Van Lee, who was a little bit probably past his um, prime at that point. No juice. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, definitely uh, getting into that uh, that that testing pool changed a lot of uh, some of these guys. Uh, fight careers, and then there's also rule changes too, right? Because Pride had well, different rule sets. Pride more rules because the juice probably didn't uh, take effect till later on. After those guys well, were in there. It probably allowed like the soccer kicks and, and stomps. stomps. Yeah. And um they had different rounds too. It wasn't probably like the ten minute round. Ten minute first round. Right? Ten first round? Ten minute first round and then after that. Pride also gave you uh penalties. Like you got the yellow card for stalling. Yes. You couldn't just mm-hmm. you couldn't just lay and pray or you couldn't no. just stall a fight out you had to engage in action or they would penalize you and it was a ring too it wasn't a cage so there was it, the grappling wasn't as prominent with the cage putting them up against the cage and like clinching up there right you also couldn't wall walk to get up yeah. you couldn't slide to the cage and then use the cage to assist in getting up and you're in a ring you I, just fall through the i'll tell you one thing with pride though that's probably some of the best slams i've ever seen in my life oh my god yeah that rampage power bomb on ricardo arona was legendary <laughs> to this day it was like something out of a fucking video game also the fuck the kevin randleman superplex that he did to Fedor. that he, was he 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 got air and yeah. Fedor survived somehow to Kimura him, of all things. Like, how? Fedor, Fedor survived to win by submission after getting slammed on his neck. That was a super I'm move. Like, like, you know what I'm talking about? Where they charge up and everything, and then, like, straight up shadows. And then you see like this some dude. Like, straight, oh, straight video game. Like, straight video game shit, yes. bro. Um, and then the know, announcer I, was I'm so hoping- cool. I hope for PFL is that this works. I hope that it works. I hope that PFL can get more popularity, which would then bring more eyes to PFL, more talent. They have a they have some really good talent in PFL, but PFL as it speaks, it's just very shallow. Whereas you know, Kayla Harrison, right? That was a big star. K- K- mm-hmm. Well, she fights in like kind of a division where there's no. UFC doesn't even have a division, a 155 women's. They don't have a lightweight women's division. But she caught an L, though. Mm-hmm. She caught an L to a girl she beat, what, like twice or three times or something? Something like that, right? I would say the staleness of that division is just the fact that there is only, like, 
five girls in that division, period. So that's why she keeps fighting the same person over and over again. Yes, it's, it's, it's extremely shallow. They don't have a deep roster. Even the UFC, like if you look at the 145 division, it doesn't it's, exist. It's not that, it's not that deep. The it's like maybe division. was it like maybe like six names in that division. Whoever wants and they're all one thirty fivers. Yeah, this is one thirty fivers that aren't cutting. Who wants to move up real quick? Yeah, right. Like you got title shot if you if you move up, you know. You win this yeah. one fight, just win one, and you fight mm-hmm. Amanda. Since we had to do this one at a catch weight, you can have the next title shot at one forty five. Exactly. <laughs> But speaking about Francis, I know me and Mark, we had many uh, exchanges about how silly Francis was to be turning down all this, these offers and whatnot. And, and like I said earlier when we was uh, doing our pregame, he, he did turn down the offer from PFL, right? He did a lot. Well... PFL originally was one of the first companies he talked to, and they turned him down for the ridiculous amount of money he wanted. So they they made a deal. He turned down PFL, Bare Knuckle, Bellator, right? Those three? He turned down everybody. One FC, one FC, right? Well, technically they turned him down. Yeah, but they're, yeah. They're like, hold up, man. Hey, hey, you asking for too much. Yeah, and I mean, if you can see on this deal... That he was asking for a lot of things that people didn't want to agree to. It wasn't just the money. Because I could see other people having problems with signing over parts of the company to him. Which he didn't fully get that, but he got somewhat stakes in the company. And then, like, he came down. I think after Bare Knuckle and 1FC basically just said, screw that. He came to a more reasonable pricing. Because originally he was asking for like $30 million per fight. And now he got a $30 million signing bonus. And it won't say exactly how much he's getting per fight. But it just says high seven figures for each fighter. So if they're considering $2 million each as a high seven figures. Then he's probably getting low millions per fight. Which is only a two to three fight deal. And then he got the $30 million signing bonus. And it says signing bonus or salary to serve as brand ambassador for PFL Africa. I mean, so he didn't get everything he wanted. That's good but he's still him. getting something. It's good for yeah. Him. It's good for him. He, he by no means got a t- bad deal. I'm just saying. he. I think he came to the realization that he, he was demanding a little too much all at once. You think he's uh, going to be like the, I don't know what it is, like, you know, the the guy that charges the way for all the other fighters to do what they want to do and, like, in hopes of getting that deal? Or do you think it's like he's just that guy that he's the outlier for the anomaly, you know what I mean? He's the Sean Watson. He's the outlier. Okay. Maybe I think he <clears throat> he may that may be true. He may he might be like a, a one off of a guy that's like he was wildly popular, um, one of the best knockout artists that um, UFC had in you know quite some time. He looked the part. He's scary looking, big dude. You know, but maybe if he he might be just a guy like you said, like a Deshaun Watson type, who he might get. He might be a one-off. I think it might also be a ticket that other guys to just, you know, choose a different route. Because, like, right now, all the money, popularity, notoriety, all all the things, when it comes to mixed martial arts, it goes through UFC if you want to be at the cream of the crop. You can't really be recognized as the best in the world if you're not fighting for the UFC. Currently speaking, I think that may change. Given this Francis deal, because it's not it. I mean, as good as Jones is, we have a big what if with him being a heavyweight champion because he didn't beat the champion. The champion was Francis and Gano. Francis ain't there no more. And if we, if Francis continues to dominate and look look good in PFL while he is a big fish in a small pond. 
he's still a former UFC champion. And didn't he didn't lose his belt. He just, you know, already waived with the company over contract. Speaking on that, I know you guys want to get to that. That little uh tweet he put out in response to the current UFC heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. What what I, I can't quote it word for word, but it was something along the lines of uh talking all something while you're across the street, right? And what Francis mm-hmm. said? Across the street then. <laughs> exactly. Being the baddest man on the planet or whatever, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Woo! My oh my. That it could hey, check this out. Hear me out, hear me out. ESPN Plus covers PFL and UFC, right? Could that be the cross promotion fight we finally get? The first one. This 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 one makes sense. Because I mean, how many fights does Jones have in him at what how old is he now? Thirty six? Two, three, two, three, right? You say two two or three, right? He wants to say two or three because there's only a couple that interest him. Stipe and then what? You know? Stipe, he was still opening up to Francis because Francis was an unknown at the time and could sign with the UFC again, even though Dana White said nah. And then who was the other one? Hmm. Is there no one else? I don't even remember who the other one was. I mean, before Blades got, like, smoked by Sergey, maybe Blades, but there's no... Uh, he wasn't interested in Sergey. He he immediately said that he had no interest in Sergey. I think that... I don't remember Sergey who it was. Sergey is... <clears throat> he's the, to me, like, I think he's in the same spot as Gon, where there's... Gon just had more recognition by being the uh, number one guy and, you know, fighting for a title already. Uh, he's a, he has very little to gain and a lot to lose against a guy like Sergey. Exactly. It's all about legacy for John Jones right now. And beating somebody like the greatest heavyweight of all time and Stipe means something. The greatest knockout artist of all time and Francis Naganu means something. But beating somebody like Sergey, who's an up and comer that hasn't really done anything yet, it's too high of a risk with no reward means nothing to his legacy right like if he, if he yeah. beats sergey it's just another name in a long list of names that he has under mm-hmm. his so it wouldn't it wouldn't mean much but if sergey beats him it would mean a ton and sergey has right. i mean i don't think he's it's a coin flip i don't think it's a 50 50 shot i think john jones would have the edge in that fight but sergey was, but sergey is extremely dangerous and it's heavyweight so no, one shot can for real put that math on its head. You know, like you go from being, um, you know, like if you, if I, I, how I think that fight would play out, I think Jones just like take him to the ground and do whatever he pleases from there. Given the fact that Overeem did, Overeem took Sergey down and pretty much had his way with him. However, Sergey got heavy hands. And he can he can change everybody's future with one shot. So it's hard to, it's hard to tell, um, but we'll we'll see. I mean, it'll unfold and we'll get to see what happens. However, this is one thing I was thinking about. What if this opens the gate, open opens the door to um, a mixed martial arts Super Bowl of sorts? Like you get EFL's champion, UFC's champion once a year at the end of the year champion versus champion type deal for an MMA Super Bowl type deal. Like, can we get that? Can that? Is that a possibility given we have Francis and John being these two heavily marketable guys that are both scary, dominant type champions? Is that a possibility? Obviously not this year, but is that a possibility for the future? I swear to you, we talked about this before. Have we not? We have, but this mm-hmm. is but now we have a shot, a real shot. We've talked about it in theory, but now this is it's more than just a theory. Now this is this is possible. Is it probable? No, probably not. No. Probably not. Like, Judging by, you know what I'm saying ESPN Plus covers both. 
I mean, and we it's not like it's, it hasn't happened before. We got the Conor McGregor versus Mayweather boxing match in a cross promotion. Because I don't think it would affect the championships. Like It's not like they're going to, if John wins, he's not taking the PFL belt. I'm just saying, like, make it like a one-off cross promotion card where you're fighting for essentially like a BMF type belt. Like the BM, like the, you can name whatever you want, like the World Martial Arts Championship or whatever. And, you know, like, it doesn't affect the UFC too much unless they lose. It might water down their brand a little bit if Francis starches John. And it might water down, like, what the UFC title really, like, means a little bit. I think that might be the danger. Maybe to the casuals, I think that could happen. But I think the... I think the real MMA fans would know exactly what's happening there. Like, if... If John Jones gets starched by Francis, it's always just going to be Francis always had that one hit knockout power. But the casual is going to be like, oh yeah, the UFC doesn't have the best, even though Francis is knocking over fucking tomato cans and PFL. You know what I mean? And it, and then we see it too. Like we saw um we saw Mike Perry versus um who was it um Luke Rockhold? No, before Luke, who who do you, the the other guy uh, MVP? Michael Venom Page. Mm-hmm. Right. Page was like a world in Bellator. MMA, I, I like Venom Page. Yes. Who? But it, it, and I, know, I, know, I know Bare Knuckle is just boxing. There's no other um, techniques allowed. But um, it, it does seem to be an edge for the UFC guys in these crossovers. Corey Anderson looked really good in Bellator. Um, Musasi was champion in Bellator after being, you know, on the UFC roster for a couple years. He recently lost to uh, Leon Edwards' brother, in fact. Fabian Edwards, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 He's fighting for the title next. Crazy, man. I mean, Musasi was a, a legend, as is. He, he, I don't oh, know he why was the UFC contender. didn't keep him. Like, honestly, I don't know. What he did to Chris Weidman should have been like, oh, sign on this dotted line, sir. But I guess right. they didn't want to do that. Like, I mean, because he was Kermit the Frog on the damn microphone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't bring the hype. He didn't, it, like, the, the WWE type shit. Like, UFC, they just got bought out. What, what, a, they just bought out, or whoever. Who owns them? BME? WME. WME. I had stocks in them. I had to let them go. Kind of hurts, but if that and another. I mean, it wasn't just that. It's Uh, storylines now. They they did try to keep Musasi, but uh, he ended up wanting to go with Scott Croker because he just liked the business better. Probably getting paid for endorsements and whatnot and what have you. Mm -hmm. But That was a big deal at the time, getting sponsorships back. Well, hopefully we could uh, get these cross promotions going. But in other news, also on this Tuesday, even though we're recording on a Wednesday, we had the announcement of all these upcoming fights post International Fight Week, starting with Saturday, July 29th, in Salt Lake City. With UFC 291, which has, let me tell you guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights announced already. There are all, like, if you see this card on paper, if this actually happens, this is probably one of the greatest fights. Or fight cards possible. Hey, they got they got Wonder Boy on the prelims. Unless they change around the card, they got Wonder Boy fighting uh, Michelle Pereira on the prelims, and Derek Lewis fighting on the prelims. What kind oh. of nonsense is this? Like, if you look at this fight card just alone, you're like, how's this not International Fight Week? The order of this fight card doesn't make any sense. It does not make no sense, but it's a fight fan. 
I don't even know if you could say it's a casual fight fan's dream, but if a casual tunes in and there's no wrestling, oh my goodness, they're in for a treat. Especially with the uh, the main event for the BMF title. Since Jorge retired, they got to pass on the title, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but every pay-per-view got to have a title unless Connor's fighting, right? This makes no sense to me, like, at all. Like, okay, you got... The one-off belt is getting to, or a new owner? I mean, I, it, it's cool. It's cool, right? Like, you got Dustin Poirier against Justin Gaethje for it. Like, it makes sense. These guys are violent. It makes sense, right? Right. Like, if you're an alcohol-driven Randy Cortez screaming fan, right? Like, it's going to be live at Hooters. That's all I got to (laughs) say. But let's play this out. I like like that. Go ahead. I like that fight a lot. Oh, that's I like that fight a lot. It's a great fight. Especially because these dudes probably uh, improve so much. Their their skills. Their two peas in the pod with their... their I mean, God, dog. That they first fight was so just... much. They improve so much. I don't care how much they improved. I just want a fucking slobber knocker between them. They improve so much. I feel Dustin's more accurate with his shots, but Justin, he hurts. Bro, he hurts. When you see him laying, it hurts. You saw what uh, he did to uh, Rafael Faziev. Faziev? Faziev? The dude yeah. that was so fast in that first round, that boy was moving like he was the flash against Homer Simpson, Justin Gaethje, right? Gaethje was like, nah, I'll play him. Check this shit out. Pieced him up, made him look like he got in a car wreck by the end of the third round. Like, how you do that in two rounds? What do you do? And Poirier, man. <sighs> Louisiana zone? Louisiana. I'm sorry. He's a Saints fan too, right? Yes. Who that? And we love him for that. Lafayette, right? That's where he fights out of? Or where he's from? Mm-hmm. Lafayette? Okay. Some of the yeah, best sure. crawfish in the world. That boy got some decent uh, sauce. His hot sauce is it's straight. It's straight. It got some kick to it. it got some flavor. That that KO, it could put you down if you ain't ready for it. Mm-hmm. But I like that fight. That's that that's a great rematch. Dana yeah. White decided to take a dump on uh, Francis' <laughs> announcements. Basically, he's like, "I'm a straight dump on you, bro. Check this out." You ever go to a birthday party or you see like a video online of someone going to a birthday party and like the person takes their cake and smashes it in their face? This is basically what Dana White just did to Francis on Francis's birthday party. Francis had the $30 million gift. He got his wish. And, and, and Dana was like, you know what? Here you go. Take, I let you have your cake and eat it too. And like smoosh it in his face. <laughs> Cause this card is fucking stacked, bro. Like from top, like you say, on the prelims, you got names like Derek Lewis, Wonder Boy. You got Kevin Holland on this card. We got Tony Justin Ferguson. Gaethje. Exactly, Bobby Green. This fight card is like a name. If you have a name in the UFC and you're not already available for a fight, he put you on this card, this Salt Lake City card. And the last time they were in Salt Lake City, it was a fucking banger. So. I'm excited to see this. Um, I really think that we might see a bloodbath in that main event with Poirier and Gaethje. That's going to be... I'm just hoping that no injuries happen in this fight. They get into the cage. Because once they get into the cage, that, that's like almost guaranteed to be a great fight. Like it's like 0% chance of being boring. Violence. I Violence. was guaranteed. And I'm off for it. So we in there. You know what time it is. Oh, Who's the co-main? Right. Who's the co-main for that one? I want to... Alex Pereira versus Jan. I really want to talk about two fights on this card that's very intriguing. And that's one of them. I don't think Polish Power is going to be able to take down 
Mr. Pereira as easy as he did with Stylebender. Due to the fact the the weight cut that Mr. Poetan that he was doing, I think he's gonna be able to actually stuff some stuff. Like I don't think I think he, this is gonna be standing. And unless he shows unless he shows dramatic improvement in his takedown defense, I expect Yon to be able to take him down. I think he's gonna be able to get up though. I think he's gonna be able to get Maybe. Up. I think he's gonna be yeah. able to get up. We, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Because, like, it's one thing to be able to stuff takedowns and, like, um, he's work got, on that and have that as part of your game plan. It's another thing to be able to um, work on getting up off your back and then also sparring and getting the timing in the stand-up because Jan Blachowicz offers a lot, of, lot in the stand-up as well. Like, he's not just um, a one-sided uh, grapple-type fighter. Like, he, can, he has a full package. He can do mm-hmm. everything. So... Um, uh, Ankalaev wrestled him in his last bout, but which was a, it ended up being a draw, right? Yeah, that, that fight blow. was was weird. Like it was weird. It was strange because, like, the, in the in the beginning of the fight, um, Ankalaev couldn't handle any of the leg kicks from Blahovich, and Blahovich looked like he looked like he was going to cruise to an easy win. And then from nowhere, he got dominated in the grappling department by um, Ankalaya at the end of the fight. And he had chances of almost finishing Jan um, toward the end of that. So for it to be a, a draw and end kind of anticlimactically, uh, it, it sucks, especially because that was like that was for the interim title, right? It was, was that for that? It was the first time the interim title got called in a draw yeah yeah that was tough um that was tough that was a tough thing so we're gonna see if the weight cut helps um Rara's chin I think his chin's good bro we'll see I think his chin's fine we'll see um we haven't really seen him tested much in that department outside of um Izzy being able to hurt him in the first fight and then put him away in the second fight. That's a different, pretty much, different argument for a different day. All right. those fights. Uh, I'm curious to see how he does in this matchup, though, because, I mean, Jan Blahovich does have alcohol power. We, we, we've we seen him put the lights out on several. Wait a minute. Fighters. One second. Glover took the title from Jan, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Who who does uh Poetan train with? Glover to share. Glover. That old man is putting some knowledge in this boy's head for show. Sure. Trust me. That's no, that's that's facts. I mean he's definitely gonna have all the help he can get. However, Glover rang in that cage. Correct. You got this young body over here that's probably absorbing some knowledge Where's i'm that? just saying glover has takedown defense also Pereira has shown absolutely zero of takedown defense <laughs> you're right you're right he got taken down by izzy but that's this thing yeah. and another like you're right you're right you're right you're right well, we're gonna see i mean i'm excited for it i don't think this i feel like this fight um is gonna be a really big test for Pereira. you know what this is he's title Beat former champion, title shot. Of course. If, 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 this is a big test for him. Um, we haven't seen Jan, and he looks like he's hungry again. Like He, he called out Izzy. For the, he said he's willing to make, what, 85 to fight Izzy again. So he might, he might have that fire back in his belly. He'll die. We He'll don't die know. I think it's going to be – I think it's an interesting fight to for um, Alex Pereira. If All he right. can get the win, then we can see him, you know – it's the winner of Yuri and um, Jamal Hill. Real quick, real quick. Pereira wins. Does he beat Jamal Hill? I give, I That's give a Hill. better fight. I give Hill the edge. Mark? Especially if it's a striking, a striking match. In any striking match, one thing I notice about Pereira is he, gets, he is open to be hit. Yeah, and looking for the hit, though. Jamal can, Jamal can put the lights out. So... Um, Especially in a boxing range, 
obviously Pereira got like he he has a, he's a, an excellent kickboxer, a top tier kickboxer. So a lot of he can land a lot of strikes outside of boxing range. Once they get in to boxing range, I give the edge to Hill. Mark, what's the what's Jamal Hill's reach? Um, that means a lot in my decision here. Question. I know he's tall. He's not. He's not. A, he's not. He's a. He's a tall like heavyweight. I don't know his exact numbers though. Let me check it out. Well, I'm leaning towards Jamal Hill if he fights up uh, Pereira. That's just me. USA, They're exactly the day. same. USA all day. That's all I gotta say. They both have a 79 inch reach. There you go. Well, they, but but so I'm sure. Um, but leg reach is gonna matter too. And Jamal's not a heavy kicker. He's like more, no. He's more moderate in that area. Like he doesn't throw a ton of kicks. He has some. He has some kicks in his arsenal. He mixes in some leg kicks, but he's not an advanced kicker at all. I would give the boxing, just the hands, to Jamal Hill, and I do want to lean towards Jamal Hill, but I do also think this is going to be a stand-up fight, and I think Pereira might have a slight advantage overall striking. I mean, he's a world champion kickboxer, so he's not a, he's not a scrub in that area at all. I'm just thinking defensively, Maul seems to be a little bit more sound defensively in striking mm-hmm. defense. He definitely has better head movement. Right, and that's 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 the area where it's going to matter. Like, if it's going to be a stand-up war, who can – I mean, it's going to be like who hits who. And Jamal's striking offense is awesome. Herrera's striking mm-hmm. offense is awesome. The difference is Pereira has shown some weaknesses in striking defense, whereas Jamal really hasn't. He's shown his his weaknesses seem to be more in the jiu-jitsu department. As uh, Paul Craig so brilliantly demonstrated. You know what might happen? And he's used to getting hit those heavy hands. Right. I mean, Jamal's cutting. You see, if, we, if you saw Jamal at the fight, he was chunky. So he's cutting... He's cutting the 205. He's a natural mm-hmm. 205er. Whereas we'll see what I mean. Oton's a big dude. Like he's not small. And I, I don't know how he made 185 in the past. But he that, made it. He made weight. So he we'll see what he looks like at 205. We've seen recent guys go up to 205 and not look so good. We're one eighty fivers, even champions that are one eighty fivers that went to two hundred five, not look so good. Weidman, Rocco, so, Rocco, <laughs> Weidman. Um, but them boys got what? pieced up by uh, cats that's no longer in the UFC. I think, right? Am I right? Am I right? Well, even Gustafson didn't look great at heavyweight. He moved from two hundred five to heavyweight. He didn't look great. Hey, Reyes, Yon's still in the UFC. Reyes got cut. And he, he, he put away there. some people that came down. I think he put away Weidman, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he he basically had the fight of his career and then just plummeted downhill afterwards. No comment. Yeah, the John Jones curse. No, hey, if, hey, if you go, if, if you, I had if you, it. Yeah, I had if you, man. If you, you had almost me? beat, if you, <laughs> if you almost beat John... Your career after that's fucked. Yes. You had Gustafson. Me? Gustafson did. He hit the knots too fast. Too soon. Yeah, yeah. He hit too the knots in the third round. <laughs> too, too soon, Junior. Too soon. No, I believe he, Gustafson, if uh, DC or John Jones wasn't around, that's that's our 205 champion. And then he would have lost wait, it no, to no, Rumble. Wait, wait. Or, well, Rumble can't be around. Either. No, no. He would have lost it to Rumble. Right. And they would have had a, a solid trilogy. Sorry, Rumble. I can, I can, um, yeah, rest in peace, Anthony Johnson. Yes. Um, if they, if they can, if I mean, I can, I can deal with one if I can't do three. It's just too many. <laughs> I that's mean, too many. hey man, that's just the ifs, bro. If we drinking ifs and one. fifths and whatnot, it, it is what it right. is. Ifs and fifths. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can tolerate one. I can do one. All right, all right. So, like I was getting at Pereira. Honestly, did you guys see his call out of uh, Johnny Walker, where all he did was posted a picture of him in front of uh, Walker's like um, post fight interview in the cage? He just posted a picture of his face, and that's it. 
this dude over here just like he don't even say nothing. He just be posting pictures saying like what's up. He's like I got you. I like I like Pereira one thousand percent over Johnny Walker. Double leg oh, kicks yeah, ain't gonna work, bro. Over that one. Double leg kicks ain't gonna that? work, bro. Double leg you know kicks ain't gonna work. I, I would have I would have said that before I saw this Anthony Smith fight. Johnny looks looks more defensively sound now. There's, Anthony did crack him with a few good shots. He doesn't Dude, look as chinny. I will say this. Jo- Anthony Smith has PTSD. And somebody has to stop it from happening. Oh, my God. Yes. I think he was just desperate. He couldn't get Yo into guys, the range. guys, I'll be back. Like- I got an important phone call, I think. Hopefully, the job's calling. I don't know why. I'll be right back. Uh-oh. You guys have at it. All I'm saying is Johnny Walker is the light heavyweight Eric Silva. That's all he is. I, he looked at be improved, man. With, with Kavanaugh, he looks better. Like, he looks more like he, at first, when he first made the switch, he looked like he was too hesitant. Like, he was like, um, he didn't have that same killer instinct that he had when he first came out. And he was wild and all over the place. He seemed to have shorn up, I mean, like, kind of like, you know, fortified his, his strike, I mean, his striking defense with this new change. And in this fight, he looked much more comfortable being offensive, even though he was still a little bit more hesitant, a little bit hesitant because he had chances where he could have gotten Anthony out of there. He didn't get, a, get I, aggressive and go for the kill. I think that's the purpose of working with Kavanaugh is before he was too reckless, way too reckless. So when you got to the higher leagues, they were just taking advantage of you being reckless and knocking you out and t- taking you out of the game. But I think he's just, I think he's still trying to find that happy medium of where he's like, still got to have that killer instinct and pounce when he needs to, but he's just kind of coasting right now, which I think is probably what's best for him because he does look better in that sense. But at the same time, until he starts getting like up there with those names, that's just, he's, he doesn't have that excitement factor anymore. So he's the Eric Silva of the light heavyweights. I think that's kind of how it goes. Like you, he's, he went from one extreme to another, right? He went from being overly aggressive to overly cautious. And he's trying to like some kind of find a good medium, like a happy medium in that. And I mean, we'll see in the coming fights. Cause I mean, he, he won and he's going to advance in the ranking. So he's going to get more, uh, get heavier competition, uh, better quality competition from now on. And if he continues to show improvement, the sky's the limit. Johnny Walker's young. He's a young guy. Mm-hmm. He's not like a, a finished product or um, image goods. So he'll, who knows? I mean, he can have um, a Charles Oliveira like late career resurgence. You know what I mean, where earlier in Charles Oliveira's career, he was known to be like a kind of a quitter. Coke artist. Right. And then, you know, he had that second win where he looked damn near unbeatable until he got beat. I mean, he looked yeah. excellent against Gaethje. Whoa, whoa, he looked whoa, 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 excellent whoa. against Poirier. I mean, we always forget that this boy was getting bopped somewhat until he won the fight. Am I right? Boom. But he still put them away. He put yeah. those guys away. Yeah, mm-hmm. He did. So it's, it's like, you know, he in, in other spots earlier in Oliver's career, would have been a, a spot for him to quit, and he didn't. But I mean, this dude's Children. been fighting since he was like 18 in the UFC or something? 21? Yeah. Something like that, right? All right, yeah. so I lied. Young, I lied. young. I lied, I lied, I lied. There's actually another fight on this card that I do want to talk about. But the other fight on this card that I do want to talk about is uh, it's probably one that not too many people know of this cat. Is uh. I cannot pronounce it, but he is fighting Paulo Costa. His name is Ikram Aliskarov from Russia. This dude, hey man, if you watch his uh, Contender Series stuff, you you know, hey, he's something. He's he's a a really good contender, and they're hoping that he makes a splash and he. 
comes straight in. That's why he's fighting number five. Uh, and Paulo taking this fight is uh, very intriguing for the most part. Like, this dude's not even ranked. Who is this guy? Right? But look at his record. Look what he does. I, I believe he's a... Uh, what they said on Contender Series? Sambo champion? He's a world Sambo champion, right? We haven't had a big Khabib in a while. Am I right? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, well, we got a we big go. boy. A, a 185 ain't light. On. 185 ain't light. I don't know. Do you? How do you feel about... um? What was, what was Blahovich's last opponent? The guy that... Uh, Goliath? Goliath. How do you feel about him? He ain't no Sambo champ. I mean, he's not a, he's not a scrub either, though. So Just because you're you from uh, Russia and you shave your mustache and you got a full beard don't mean shit. <laughs> That's all I, got I mean, he looks, he looks the part. He looks the part. He looks the part. Oh, you feeling in? That's what you saying? You feeling in? He could in? be a solid. I mean, he could be a legitimate, like, I'm villain. You know what I mean? Like, nah, bro. This dude's Sambo Chan. Yes. I think back Not the back main villain, something. but at least the, the, the hands. Yeah, like, he's I like think one, he's back he's like, back. He's like one of those guys that, like, um, Liam Neeson ends up fighting to get his daughter back. Taken. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm excited for that fight too. I just I'm excited just to see Paul Acosta compete again. Right, he hasn't competed since I th- he did compete in August last year, but it was against fucking Luke Rockhold. So that was a, and that was a fun. That was a bloodbath. That was <laughs> <laughs> literally like he uh, he got rained on, smeared, Rockhold. snotted. Yeah, that was that was fucking disgusting. Right. Uh, yeah, that was nasty, though. But I, I'm, I'm curious to see Paulo Costa get back in there and kind of return to that eraser form where he's like, you know, just eliminating people in a quick fashion. Hopefully, we'll see. Is it, is, he, is this fight at 205 or 85? Uh, 85. 85. So Paulo's back at 85. Though, okay. I thought he was uh, mm-hmm. banished from 85. Oh, you know how it is. You get banished from 85, and then you get one fight, and then they're like, all right, we'll let you back in the club. You know? Okay. And I mean, I, I am. I, I'm excited for Sober Costa. Like, Sober Costa, I need him back. Like, this this wine before, wine and dine shit that he was doing before, not not for me. But Sober yes. Costa, I'm there. So is a Sober Costa going to be in the same rank as, like, uh, was it uh, what's the what's Kane's um, uh, C level Kane? C level Kane is gonna be like one of those kind of guys. Yeah, blonde Brunson, purple lips Costa. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of looking forward to this uh, legendary fight too, man. Where like we got Bobby Green, who's like hood legend. You know, he comes to the press conferences with. Six, six, five, six, seven chains on, you know, four to five rings like a pimp, added up. And he got Tony Ferguson, who is, he was the king of cringe long before Cejudo could have that title. Ferguson, talent wise, was one of the best fighters we've seen, I've ever seen. And I really wish we could have gotten him uh, at top peak, Tony versus Habib, but. Um, unfortunately, that fight was cursed, and we didn't, we couldn't get to see, we couldn't, didn't get to see that. But this is going to be an interesting one because Bobby Green's not much of a grappler. He's more of a a boxer, stand up fighter, very very um, point heavy. And I don't know which version of Tony we're going to get. Are we going to get a watered down Tony that we've we've been getting the past couple fights, the past three, two or three fights? Or will Tony um, kind of regain some form here and, you know, look impressive again? I mean, so I'm intrigued for that fight because of that. Like, I'm, I'm curious of what version of Tony am I going to get to see? And is, is he on the way out? Or will he have me string together some, some success and go out on top? Unfortunately, I think Tony is on his way out. 
He he spent his prime trying to get that Habib fight. And he just hasn't been in form for a long time. But I will say, at least for this fight, he's been very quiet. So in my hopes is he's focusing on this fight a hell of a lot more than he usually does. I hope so. For Tony's sake, I hope so. Because to me, yeah. Tony, to me, if Tony doesn't take another fight in the UFC at all, he's a legend in my eyes. Um, 100%. Tony's one of those guys who has always relied on his resilience and his toughness as well as his skill set to get it done. And even in the fights that he won, he would take some really good damage before he would get the win. And I think that accumulation over the course of a career just kind of like paid its price. We saw it in the Gaethje fight. We saw it, you know, in, in some of the subsequent fights after that, that he just seemed like he was a little bit, he had some hard miles on him, you know? But uh, I would like to see some, a, a, just a nice, entertaining fight from that. And if Tony, you know, can get the win, that's awesome. It'd be good. Um, and if he doesn't, then, you know, it'll be fine to see him, you know, leave the gloves in the cage and, you know, move on to whatever else he wants to move on to. And if he wants to come back and fight again, as long as he's willing to get in there, I'm willing to watch. I'm a, I'm a fan, so I like, I like Tony Ferguson, and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what version of him shows up in this Bobby Green fight out in Salt Lake City. Yeah, for sure. Tony Le- or Tony Ferguson is a legend, and he's never had a boring fight. Even the ones he's lost and looked awkward. And he's always going to be a legend, no matter what. Hey, I got but, a question. So you guys read my mind somehow and knew that was the other fight I was going to talk about? Sure. Yes. God. You guys some motherfuckers. That's all I gotta say. When you know you, God, <laughs> so when you, when you know your boy, when you know your boy, you just know your boy. That was that was the like. one. That was the one. That was the one. Like I'm, we know who we like. I'm so intrigued by this fight because it could go either way. It's like this. This card is coin flip city, like by far. Yes. Like you can't tell me otherwise. Like who can you say? Like okay, this yeah, he's definitely winning. No, you really can't. Like, uh, there's too many variables with everything. Like, even the Kevin know. Holland fight. I, guess, I like Kevin Holland by knockout against KS. I, I, can, I can say, I can say definitive, definitively that I like Kevin Holland to beat Michael Kiesa. You you think that? Yeah, no matter where this fight goes. I, I think Kevin, Kevin Kevin has good jiu-jitsu. Kies is a jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu ace. So I feel like that they, they would probably... Uh, end up canceling each other out a little bit there. You know what? The grappling you know exchange. What? But in the stand up, I hey. love Kevin Holland. Hey. I, I like Kevin yeah. Holland in stand up too. Uh, I like uh, 20 push ups if Kiesa wins by submission. Only way. Only uh, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only for sure. Way. Yeah, yeah. Only, yeah, yeah. Only, yeah, yeah. Way. Only way. 100%. Yeah, you got that bad. I'll take. Wait, hold up. I'm confused on my own bet. If Kiesa <laughs> wins by uh, 20 push-ups... Wait, what? <laughs> what? If he wins by 20 push-ups, he's going to do no, push-ups no. on him? If Kiesa <laughs> wins by 20... Or by submission, I'll do... You do 20 push-ups. You got a bet, man. I'm in. Okay. Okay. So if Kiesa loses, <laughs> I do 20 push-ups. But I like Kevin I Holland. Had Holland for I, got, I got Kevin Holland by uh, <laughs> knockout. But that's what I'm saying. It's a coin flip. Now I just confused everybody listening because I don't. Yes, I don't, you know, about I don't, I don't see that fight. I don't see that fight as a coin flip. I I feel it could be a coin flip, even though I like Kevin Holland by a uh, knockout. I like Kevin Best Holland I, for the no. knockout, but I can see Ke- uh, Kevin Holland getting submitted by KSU somehow. Nah, if Kevin he Holland's about jiu-jitsu mama, is underrated. If he talks about his mama, it's a, it's a wrap. Oh yeah, if you talk about his mama or. No, no, it's a Kevin. It's a Kevin. He it's a Kevin. It's a Kevin. It's another Kevin because the last time a Kevin talked about his mama, he got submitted. He get, yeah, he got submitted. He got submitted. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see fight night. 
We'll see Fight Night how I feel. Let me. Well, hey, the, I'm gonna renege on that bet. I'm renege on the bet. Hold on. Let me, best, let me rephrase listen, that. The best I can give that fight is 60-40. 60-40, Kevin Holland. I like Kevin not, Holland by knockout. This is not a 50-50 fight to me. Okay. I like Kevin Holland by knockout. That's my bet. I take that bet. Mm. That's a rough one for me. I don't know which one I want. This is a coin flip to me. But Kevin Holland's been more active. And Kiesa hasn't looked true to form in his last couple of fights. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with Holland. He, is, he hasn't looked that good at 170. Like, he's, I mean, he, all of his success came at 155. He hasn't really looked that good at 170. And Kevin Holland's kind of, like, rounded out into, like, I mean, outside of getting mauled by Hamza on short notice. That's, he looked pretty decent at 170. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if, like, he can bounce back and get an impressive win against Kiesa, which I think he will. I, I think, um, in, my, in my mind, I don't know what the odds makers are saying about this fight yet. I didn't look at the numbers. I would, uh, I, I would think that um, Kevin would be a, a pretty decent favorite. His last fight was a uh, Wonder Boy, though, right? Who? Who? Holland? I think his last fight was Hamza. No, it was Pazanivio. Pazanivio. Who won that one? Holland by knockout. Jesus Christ. Who? I mean, Kevin Holland, you can never count them out, bro. Nah, never. It just he's depends like, on how much weed he smoked. He's like the cowboy, bro. Like, he's another cowboy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's there to fight. Well, considering the other two are retired... Uh, he can take that over. Who's um Derek Lewis's opponent on this one? Oh, the creator character. I I seen him around before, but he looks like a creator character. He looks like the default character that you would pick in uh <laughs> UFC whatever it is the next game. Like this is your default character. This is how he looks if you pick the heavyweight body. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Marcus Rodrigo de Lima. Oh no! Yeah, I know. I know this cat. That's the bald guy, right? Yeah, I mm-hmm. know him too. But yeah, yeah no, he's good. No, yeah, that's, okay. That's, that should be interesting. That's a that's a that's a good one. He's a he yeah, got heavy fight. hands, really heavy hands too. He's a, he's got he got some good knockouts. They both yeah, have the same bad. same point in their career. I feel. Yeah, that should be a fun fight. Too. Somebody gonna lose. That's all I know. I'm waiting for that uh Derek Lewis uppercut. I mean, we wasn't even supposed to, like, talk much about this card, but... But it's a loaded card. The last fight we really got to talk about is the the fight that's supposed to be on the prelims, which makes no sense at all in the welterweight division, is number seven, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson against number 15, Michelle Pereira. I rolled them R's good that time, right? No, probably, probably <laughs> better not. than I could ever do. Probably not. I tried my best. <laughs> I should do better, but yes, the break dancing, back flipping, what have you and what not, Mister Michel. He's so hyped before he gets to the cage against the veteran, the karate superstar. Stephen Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. The, I don't know the how thing this about fight goes, this... man. It's like traditional versus extremely untraditional. So wherever this fight goes, it is what it is. But I really don't see this being a grappling match, but I can see it happening from Michelle's part just because they might feel there's a advantage there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Can, can we talk about the fact that Wonder Boy is fucking 40 years old and Michelle Pereira looks like he's 40 but trying to dye his hair? And he's only 29? Who? Michelle Pereira. He looks like he's the old man trying to dye his hair and his beard, but he's only 29. But Wonder Boy is actually 40 but looks younger. I, it's throwing me off here. But it was the pictures, right? <laughs> yeah. 
this fight, man, I can't <laughs> call it, man. Is 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 this this is the real coin flip to me? Because like I said, how like, I want to feel about it. I mean, we already know what Wonder Boy's about. He's a very traditional style, wide style, wide stance, karate style. And then you got Michelle mm-hmm. Pereira with a fucking. Who knows what he's gonna do? He might do fucking some flares. He might hit some capoeira. We don't know what he's gonna do. This dude's high. Uh- as long as he's, my cross, he's got the energy, he's good. My crossroads there are when you get such an unorthodox person against traditional karate, you know, it tends to throw Stephen Thompson off his game. But every time I try to count out Wonder Boy, he just he wins. Motherfucker just wins. And even though he's forty he still looks twitchy and quick and explosive, so I, I I don't know. Every time I think people figured him out, he just, he stays relevant. He stays in that top ten. He's a killer. You know, I, I just talked myself into it. Wonder Boy by unanimous decision. Yeah, I see this dude being the... Uh... Fighter IQ. The only way he loses is really by a knockout. I don't see mm-hmm. him getting submitted by this cat. Like this cat proved that he doesn't have really much of a gas tank, so he might shoot his load early. You never know. He might think he has Wonder Boy hurt. You never know. There's rankings for a reason, right? Yep. And there's train horns for a reason. Correct. They're all warnings. But the good thing about this card is that me and you is off that day for show. So, we is definitely watching this one. Definitely. You can't miss this. I mean, there's not a bad fight on it. Yeah, they made sure of that one. That's why I'm, like, so confused about, like, okay, is it because they... Had to do something because of uh, France's announcement. Did they have an inside source? Or were they going to do that anyways? Because look at these fights. All these, like, at least some of them, they could have spread this shit out and had it as uh, fight nights. Literally, or co-main events on something else. Just to have a a pay-per-view with a BMF title on the line? Like, really? Really? Like, what's your plan here, UFC? Is this just a shit on uh, France's announcement, or was this in the works? Like, you heard Francis I... had an announcement, and then uh, now you gotta do yours? Or, like, what's going on here? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. They did announce that O'Malley will be fighting Sterling at UFC 292 in August. Yes, right after. Did they put this card together just because? And then they're like, hold up, hold up. Bam. Did the fighters know? And they were like, you can't say shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is so random to me. Because the international think... fight we was weak. If you look at the card. Sorry, Mark. I, I honestly do think that a lot of this was just a... We got to overshadow the Francis signing. I, I would be willing to bet that there wasn't even a BMF title on the line originally. And they were like, you know what? Francis thinks he's the baddest motherfucker in the world. Well, we're going to put the baddest motherfucker world title on the line right now. N- none of that would surprise me. That's what I'm thinking. Because it's like they announced all these fights, right? For this, this UFC. And... UFC 290, which is International Fight Week, is so weak compared to this card. And you can't tell me these dudes couldn't be ready in, like, what, three weeks prior, right? Right. If you look at the card for UFC 290 International Fight Week, which is supposed to be the UFC's, like, second biggest card of the year, right? Am I right? Right. And you got... That and New Year's. You, yeah, New Year's. 
They used to they used to load up on uh, the Super Bowl card. Super Bowl weekend used to be lit. But if you look at the the card for UFC 290, you're like, huh, eh, eh, eh. Can we talk about the lack of U.S. talent on that card? Oh, for International Fight Week. Oh man, I'm looking at it, and you're like, you are throwing a dig in there. You definitely are throwing a dig in there. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple names, but no big names. All the big names are, I guess it is international. It is International Fight Week, but you would want at least one American champion on there, right? I mean, it's it's usually been International Fight Week usually has one of the U.S. champs defending. But I will say this, that champion didn't get his fight. And that is the heavyweight champion. I believe that mm-hmm. was the rumored main event. And there was supposed to be three title fights on there. But it is what it is. What if they throw that on 291 also? Nah, that fight's not going to happen. Until later. <laughs> so random, man. Like, John took no damage, bro. What's Stipe doing? You know Firefighting. Saying? Bro, how many fires is going on in, uh, where's he at? Cleveland? Cohog? Where the fuck is he at? In old, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where the Cleveland. fuck is he at, bro? Uh, Akron? What, 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 how many other cities in fucking Ohio, bro? Like, bro. Yeah. Motherfucker, <laughs> set the rain temperature thing, whatever, government. Set the rain thing off. Do something. There's too many fires. We need Stipe fighting, bro. We don't need him <laughs> saving lives no more, saving kitties out of trees and stuff. We need him fighting. We need him taking lives. But At least will, some souls. I will not lie, though. The The most intriguing matchup on the uh, fight card, the International Fight Week, is definitely Robert Whitaker against uh, DDP. Correct. That is the most intriguing one because all these other ones, it is what it is. We know something's going to happen, whatever. I really don't see Yair beating Volkanovski, but it could happen. He could catch him with something crazy because the Mexican spin master has something up his sleeve. But after seeing Volkanovski fight Islam, it's like, dude, he's, he's got to be pound for pound. Like, literally, he is pound for pound currently. And if he continues with his path, he's going on the my, my Mount Rushmore along with Demetrius and John Jones and Anderson for sure. And GSP. I'm going like, to I'm have, like, this crazy ass. You're going to have a big ass Mount Rushmore? Yeah, it's going to be, like, so many people. You're going to have all the Hokages? Yeah. Yeah, how many Hokages they got? Like, six? Like eleven. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We could go with that one. My my Hokage Mount Rushmore type shit. Yeah, for sure. Because there's a lot of them. Max Holloway is already on there forever. <laughs> <laughs> and Aldo, sorry, sorry, I gotta do double uh, divisions, but he's definitely on there too. But yeah, man. Good talk, guys. Yes, sir. We try to keep it short, but, you know, we ramble. We ramble, and it's not a five-hour-long podcast like usual. Uh, we're supposed to do another one. I don't know what day, but we're supposed to do another one talking about everything under the sun. So if you guys like this kind of content, check us out. Ashley Knuckles MMA on YouTube, Twitter. Are we anywhere Spotify. else? We're definitely on Spotify. Spotify. Apple, Apple iTunes uh, podcast. We're everywhere. Ashley Knuckles. Just look us up. Yes, sir. I'm your boy, Rosie P. Brian. Mark G. Or B Woods. B Dubs. What's up, baby? Marky G. We're missing uh, J Dubs and. 
casual Chris. But on that note, zip it up. Zip it out. Peace. Like and subscribe, baby. Like yeah. and subscribe. All day, every day. Three times. I like Volkanovski by knockout. I'm going to go with knockout. We'll keep that for another I like time. that. We're, and let's stop it. Let's stop it. Peace.